Hey there, I'm Robbie Carmen, And I'm Rich Harrington. And welcome to the Creative Cows DSLR Essentials Podcast. And on this episode, Rich, we're going to talk about a pretty cool tool that I think photographers might know about, but video pros probably have rarely, if ever, touched this application, and that's Adobe Bridge. Yeah, and what I like about it is that it's a visual tool for managing your files, and it works great with DSLR. I use it to screen and organize things, yep. but the big thing that I want to show today, and I'm sure you've been caught by this too, right? Like, mm. how many times do you have a clip called, oh, I don't know, MVI001? Uh, let me see, uh, a couple thousand times, yeah. 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 yeah and, and so you got this problem of these clips that don't have a unique name, don't have any sort of time code, yep and you just get screwed. It's so easy to, like, you know, like you move the project from one system to another and you open it up, you're like, this is not my project. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's kind of maddening because, you know, it's like these cameras, they, you know, they have these built-in counters that you can, I don't know, manually reset so they go back to 001 or whatever. And accidentally reset. Right, <laughs> or over the course of time, just if you shoot a lot, that's going to reset itself as well. And it can yeah. become a little mind-numbing when you're trying to, like, let's say you're in Final Cut or Premiere or Avid, wherever, and you're trying to go back and reconnect footage and it's going, Hey, look, I found 12 files called MVI0001. Which one do you want me to use? You yeah, know? And, and you could really screw yourself up, and especially if you're doing a multi-camera shoot, it's pretty deadly. Yep. So this is where Bridge can actually save you, yep. and we could make a batch renaming template, and then we can actually apply a timecode stamp and set that time code when we get into Premiere or Final Cut Pro. Yeah, absolutely. So here I have uh, I have Bridge open already. This yep. is the new version of Bridge. And one thing I should note um, about Bridge that's really really cool is that we can actually take footage. You can also use it sort of as you know as you mentioned an asset manager too. So I actually have a card attached to my system here, yep. and I can rename files on the card themselves, of course. But I also can write inside of Bridge. I can simply select all my files that I want to copy over, yep. navigate over here to the folders uh, tree create a new folder wherever my organization is, and then simply copy the media through Bridge. Yeah, this isn't Lightroom, this isn't Aperture. It's not making a library or a database. So it's literally moving files on your hard drive. So if you rename it here, it's renamed on the hard drive. You want to copy to a new location, you can copy to a new location. It's really kind of cool like that, except you don't have that safety net of a library. So you have to really think about do I want to do this before you do it? Right, and so the thing is, I'll just be clear about this. I've actually, we're gonna change the names on this actual card, yeah. but I've actually already backed up this card and made a disk image of it, because I know a lot of you are probably thinking, whoa, why am I gonna change the names of the files on the card? I'm just doing that for expediency's sake. I didn't wanna have to bore you for three or four minutes of copying this footage. Right. I've already made a disk image of it, and this is the, this is the card. So all I'm gonna do is select all these files here, yep. and then I'm gonna come up to the tools menu here, and then down to this option right here called Batch Rename. Yep, and this brings up a new dialog box that has sort of a default module. What we're going to do is we're going to actually start and just make our own new preset. So click under Preset there, and yep. you know you see that we got some options. Yeah, let's go to Choose Default here. Yep, we'll go back to Default, and we'll make a new one. Yep. So you see down here that there's some text in there. What I'll typically do is I will put in the name of the camera first. So if I'm working on a multi-camera shoot and we know that this was camera one for that shoot, sure. I just said cam one underscore. Yep, it's camera one underscore. Here yeah, because you want to avoid spaces. Yep, absolutely. Then we're looking at date and timestamp. So let's start with year, month, day. That's fine. Right, and just to note, if you these were there's essentially like rules that we can create here how to name them. So if you click in this first this first menu here, you can see that you can enter things like text, current file name, sequence number, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So depending on how you're trying to name it, you just pick a new option. So in this first option here, we chose text obviously because we wanted to have it be camera one, but now we're going to choose date and time. Yeah, and then next to that, click the little plus symbol to add another metadata field. Right, exactly. So if I click plus here, I can add a new one. Yeah, and we'll put, uh, let's change this to date and time again. Yep, there's date and time. And this time, instead of using month, date, and year, we'll go down to hours, minutes, and seconds. This guy right here, yep. Yeah. So now we're going to be naming the file. And the cool thing about this is you can also see a preview of this down here, right? Yep. So camera one right now, here's the date, here's the time. And then we haven't finished this part yet, but you can see you can get a preview as you're naming things. Yeah, and if you want to insert a field in between there, like an underscore between the year and the click, date, I'll just, just set a plus. new one here. Yep, and yep. then we'll just do text, and let's just say underscore, right? Yeah, and so now we got it's pretty cool. It's going to do a unique name and number, and this is just as good as anything on say like a Sony or a Panasonic camera. These are truly unique numbers because theoretically, since this is going down to the second level. 
it's pretty impossible to have two clips that were one set less than a second long with the exact same name. Right, and you know, we might not want this last little bit here, this underscore zero 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 one part. So just like you added rules, yeah. you can also just remove them to get them out of there as well. Yeah, and so we're looking pretty good here. We've got a unique thing. The big thing here is click that preserve original file name. This is very important, right? And when you check that preserve current file name in XMP metadata, it's just text, it's just metadata that's going to always coexist with that file. Yeah. And so that way, if you do need to go back and, I don't know, you know, find that clip again on the disk archive, you made that kind of stuff, you can. Well, if you click one of those pop-up lists there, like if you ever had to go back and rename, like click just any of those, you'll see that the a preserved file name is an option. So yep. you could batch rename back to the original names pretty quickly. And I think that you know you have options here for compatibility. Compatibility is good. Yeah, yeah, I've never found a reason not to make sure that, you know, because I'm on a Mac here, obviously Mac OS is by default checked here. I'm sure I'll get a flame for this, but I've never met somebody editing video on a Unix system yet, but we'll make it compatible. Uh, yeah, for I'm too. sure. <laughs> we'll make it compatible for everybody. And so once you do that, of course, you can see the current file name down here. You can see how it's going to be renamed. Yep. And then up here in the destination folder, you can do a couple things, right? So I mentioned that I was going to rename off this card. Well, I don't actually need to do that either, right? right. I, can, uh, I can rename in the same folder, which would be an accident in this case because this is my right. original camera card, or I can actually move the footage to another folder. And that's going to erase it off of one location and move it to the next. Right, or I can copy it to another folder and choose a location and have that renaming take place, which yeah. is really, really handy. Yeah, and you just click the browse button, go ahead and do that. Yeah, let me just go down, I'll just go down to my desktop here and create a new folder. Sure, we'll just call this uh, new DSLR shoot, and we'll click create, and click choose. Yep. And then notice up here, big thing to save time for the future, click that save button right, and name you know, this template. Because we started with the default template, but now it says default modified. So if I click save here, I can just say this, you know, uh, DSLR template. Yeah. Click OK. And now anytime that I want to come back and recall that, it's just here in my list of templates that I use. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time that you have a new card. Consistency is key here. Absolutely. So, once you've done this, you've gotten everything done, you've, you know, you're choosing where to copy it, you've got the naming template set up, all you literally have to do here is click Rename. Yeah, and let it roll. And it gives you progress update. It's literally transferring to your target folder. So in a way, it's sort of a log and transfer type tool. Yep. And it's renaming them as it's going. The other cool thing that we didn't even talk about, Bridge, but you can go and look up on some of our Photoshop podcasts mm -hmm. on the cow, is you could apply ratings here, you could sift and sort, you oh, could yeah. preview. I mean, it really is. I mean, again, it's one of those things, I think, to photography and graphics pros, they're like, well, yeah, I use Bridge all the time to do these things. Right. But this truly is uh, a level of asset management that I think a lot of people are not aware of. You know, other people think about real expensive digital asset management systems or very complex ones like, you know, Final Cut Server or whatever, you know, all the ones that are out there. Yeah. But this really quickly can, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, a couple months ago, I knew next to nothing about this tool, yeah. and then I started using it every day, and I was like, wow, this is a truly powerful asset management tool. Yeah, and what's great, too, is like one of the tricks I like to do is remember to fire off a still when I'm doing my setups, yep. and then I get the extra metadata about the video clip. What was the exposure, the ISO? Yep. All those settings get stored with it, and you could see those right in Bridge. You could even copy and paste that metadata. So if you shot a still, and it captured your GPS tag, all yeah, your yep. metadata, you could literally copy that metadata and paste on the video clips, and and now I could stop tap dancing because that entire card is actually done. Yeah, and I think one of the cool things, and this is not just to say I love them for the sake of loving them, but one of the things I do love about Adobe is the, the importance that they've placed on metadata flow, not just in their own products, right. but they're just in general metadata flow and, and keeping that metadata important because after all, you know, they always say content is king. But in the world that we live in, right. content doesn't mean anything if you can't find what you need and work with it in an efficient method. Content with metadata is, is king. king. Exactly. Yeah, so on that, I mean, you know, obviously this would come into Premiere Pro, but let's just switch over to Final Cut and yeah. show that it comes in so there. So just here, here's, here on my desktop here, here's this new footage, and you can see that it's automatically been renamed yep. to how we want it to. And let me go back over here to Final Cut Pro and launch that up. And then I'll just go, let's just do File, Import, and Folder. And I'll just import this whole folder. Now this is native H.264 here. A lot of people think you can't bring that directly into Final Cut. You actually can. One of my favorite philosophies is I will stay native as long as possible, yep. and I'll do my first cut, and then I'll run the media manager and cut it down. Right. In the current version of Final Cut 7 and Final Cut 7, it is a little clunky. I mean, H.264 is a, a pretty heavy-duty codec math-wise. Um, I would imagine in, you know, the, they've announced Final Cut Pro 10, but 
who knows what's going to happen with that, you know. But right now, I agree with you that there's really nothing stopping you from editing natively in Final Cut, just with the caveat that you can get a little spinning beach ball every once in a while. And don't do effects and yeah, transitions. transitions and that kind of stuff, right? Okay, so here's a clip. Here's my media start and end time right yeah. here, right? So notice that they all start at, you know, zero, zero, zero. Um, yeah. That kind of thing. But we've gone actually ahead and added our own time code into the file name here, right? So remember yeah. we did the date that it was shot, the hours, minutes, seconds, that kind of stuff, yeah. right? And that might be good enough for a lot of folks. This next step is just purely optional. Totally. If you are meticulous or you maybe have an editing assistant and you want them <laughs> to actually get things organized. Oh, you're so lucky, Rich. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is just select this clip and I'm going to come up to modify and then down to time code. Yep. And then here in the modify time code window here, there's an option right here to modify the source time code. So if I click in that, notice that it has a real time code, format, frame rate, all that kind of stuff, right? Yep. And of course, you can adjust the real and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm actually just going to do here for right now is just enter in the time code that I've put into my actual file, yep. right? Now, I don't need to take the date, I don't think. I'm just nope. going to take the hours, minutes, and seconds, right? So I'm just going to type in 13, 21, 28. And then add the zero zero since there zero, are no zero. frames. Yep, there we go. All right, so I've changed this to 13, 21, 28. Yep. Right? And I'll go ahead and click OK. And now you'll notice here in the media start and end, it actually has that same time code. Notice that it starts at 13, 21, 28, which matches the name of the actual clip. And as you pointed out, Rich, this is an optional step. Right. But it's still nice if you need to do things like create, you know, screeners with time code burn in, that kind of stuff, you're going to have at least some sort of time code instead of everything starting at, say, zero. Right. It's going to make it easier, like you said, when you're screening clips or if you start to do media management, you want to get smaller and you're transcoding this down to just using parts of a clip. Yep. Having those unique numbers just makes it that much easier. But the big thing here was the unique names. Yep. That's 95% of the battle. Yep. Everything else is just better if you could do it. Absolutely. So you can see that using Adobe Bridge is just another way of many ways that we can use uh, you know, to change names to import footage, that kind of stuff. And I, I particularly like the Adobe Bridge method uh, simply because not only does it allow us to do battery naming, it allows us to do other things that you mentioned before, like we can add in you know, keywords and ratings and all that kind of stuff. And it, depending on where you're going with it, the nice thing about Bridge is that it's just metadata. So yeah. it can flow to Premiere, it can flow to you know wherever. Yeah, and what I like here, is particularly what you said there, is that we don't live in a single OS, single editing system environment. So if I got to hand off footage and they're on Vegas or they're on Avid, I really like having unique clip names that actually have some sort of time code reference. It just makes it so much easier for everybody involved in the post pipeline. Absolutely. So there you go, a little bit more about using Adobe Bridge. Be sure to head over to Creative Cow and check out this podcast as well as the Creative Cow magazine. And be sure to join in on the forums there on the Creative Cow, especially the DSLR forum, uh, where, which you'll find a lot of great and uh, fun information. Yeah. My name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. Thanks a lot for joining us.